This beautiful girl is Joy. That morning, Joy and her fiancé, Mason, were about to go to work. Before parting ways, Joy gave him a drink that he made special for him because that day was Mason's birthday. Mason knew that the taste is not good but because he respected his girlfriend, he forced himself to accept it. On the other hand, a man named Jack was watching a basketball match with his co-workers when suddenly, their boss showed up. Seeing their boss coming, they immediately returned to their things. Without further ado, Jack's boss who was already fed up with his behavior said that starting that day, Jack was fired. Jack didn't accept it. He even challenged his boss to a one-on-one -on -one basketball match. If the wins, the boss must give him a second chance but if he loses, he will quit the job. They then went to a basketball alley in town. Jack won the match at first, but in the end, his boss managed to turn things around and beat Jack, meaning that Jack had to quit his job as he promised before. Before parting, his boss told him that it was hard for him to fire him. Turned out, Jack's boss was none other than his own father. He said that it was hard for him to fire his own son but the most important thing was being professional at work and Jack didn't seem to have it with him. He was never good at his work. At night, after she came home from work, Joy and her friends prepared a surprise party for Mason's birthday. When Joy was chatting with her friend named Tipper, Joy showed her a special gift that she would later give to Mason. It was a vacation ticket to Las Vegas. Looking at the gift, Tipper was amazed and said that Mason must be a lucky man because he has a lover like Joy. Joy then told everyone to hide. Sadly, the moment Joy talked to Mason when he came, Mason suddenly wanted to break up with her without any clear reason. Joy was shocked to hear that. Knowing the surprise is ruined, Joy's friends decided to come out from hiding. To cheer Joy, Tipper decided to take Joy with her to the bar. At the bar, Joy poured out her sadness and anger, but even though she was angry, Joy didn't want to throw away the engagement ring that Mason gave her because it is expensive. He decided to keep wearing it. Seeing Joy who was still buried in sadness, Tipper suggested that they went to Las Vegas using the ticket that Joy bought for Mason. Hearing that, Joy decided to do it. Meanwhile, in another place, Jack told his problem this afternoon to his friend named Hayter. Jack said that he was stressed out after being fired by his own father and needed to go on vacation to a faraway place. Just like what Tipper suggested to Joy, Hayter also suggested that both of them went to Las Vegas to have some fun. The next day, they finally went to Las Vegas. Joy with Tipper and Jack with Hayter. At night, after being satisfied to spend time around Las Vegas, Joy and Tipper decided to return to their hotel to have a rest. At the same time, Jack and Hayter also went into their hotel room, but when Hayter wanted to use the bathroom, he was surprised to see Tipper and Joy inside the bathroom. When things started to calm down, Joy complained to the receptionist because they accidentally shared the same room with strangers and asked for another room. Turned out, there was a mix-up. Knowing his mistake, the receptionist decided to give her the most luxurious room in the hotel. The penthouse. Seeing that, Jack started complaining too. As an apology for Jack, the receptionist did the same thing. They were given access to the VIP facilities in the hotel. After the problem was solved, the four of them then went around town by limousine, one of the hotel's VIP facilities. While hanging out at the cafe, Jack confided to Joy that the real reason he was in Las Vegas was that he was fired by his own father and wanted to let some stress out. Hearing the story just now, Joy just smiled. She then started telling her reason to be there. She was upset because she had just been dumped by his fiancé. To cheer themselves up, they both decided to have fun spending as much time as they wanted to forget all their life problems. Joy woke up this morning and was confused when she found a ring on her finger. She then read a message left by Jack in the mirror saying that he was waiting for her, which he referred to as his wife. Suddenly, Joy remembered last night's incident. She remembered that last night when she was drunk, she and Jack got married. On the other hand, Jack told Hayter about his marriage with Joy. Jack said that he also didn't know why they ended up getting married because the two of them had just met. In the middle of a chat, Joy and Tipper came. An awkward moment happened. The moment Joy saw Jack, she went straight to the casino machine. Jack immediately approached her and told her that what they did last night was only a mistake and that she didn't need to worry about it. He said that he would immediately make a marriage annulment letter, but the emotions arose. Both of them started arguing and blamed each other. Joy had enough of Jack's pride and gave him a penny to make fun of him. Before leaving, Jack decided to use the coin to bet on the casino machine. Suddenly, a loud noise came out of the machine as Jack hit the jackpot worth $3 million. Amidst the excitement, Joy returned and tried to claim the jackpot. 
Joy said that the coin used was hers so the jackpot belonged to her while Jack said that it was his luck that won the jackpot so the money belonged to him. Joy suddenly said that they were both married and thus, his money is her money too. Not wanting to give the money to her, they decided to finish off the problem at the court the next day. They went on a trial to determine to whom the money belongs. During the trial, the judge was confused about the reasons for their divorce. The two of them have been unreasonable. That was the judge's first time judging a divorce trial for a couple who just married for a day. The judge decided to confiscate the three million dollars from them. He also told them to try to live as husband and wife for six months before deciding everything. Moreover, they were also required to take counseling guidance, but if before the six-month probationary period is over, someone gives up and asks for a divorce, the judge will automatically give the prize money to the divorce because the divorced had managed to survive until the end. Hearing the judge's decision, like it or not, from now on, Joy was forced to live together in Jack's apartment. Their life as a married couple finally began. On the first night, Joy wanted to sleep on the bed so Jack had to sleep on the couch. When Joy checked Jack's bed, she felt nauseous because Jack's mattress smelled so bad. Finally, Joy had to clean the bed all night and couldn't sleep at all. Day after day they tried to annoy each other. Joy purposely groomed for a long time in the bathroom, Jack urinated in the sink, took down the toilet lid and bathroom door, and many more. They did that so that one of them would end up giving up and asking for a divorce before six months. Even though they messed up each other's lives, during the counseling session, they pretended to look intimate and romantic. One day, while exercising with Tipper, Joy confided that her life was now a mess because of Jack. Tipper suddenly got an idea. She suggested Joy frame Jack to make him look like a bad husband to make the judge and consultant sympathize with her. That way, Joy would win the trial and could claim the money. Meanwhile, elsewhere, Jack also got the same advice from Hayter. The next day, their new plan started. On the first day, Jack put stimulants into Joy's drink so that she would make trouble in her office and get fired. Unfortunately, Jack's plan failed. As a result of the effects of the drug, Joy got even more enthusiastic at work to the point where her colleagues and the boss also got excited too. That night, two sexy women came to Jack's apartment. The two women told him that their apartment door was broken and they wanted to stay there for a while until it was finished repaired. Jack happily allowed them to enter. He then called the hater and then told him about his current condition. Hearing that, Hayter immediately ordered Jack to kick the two women out while saying that this must be Joy's plan who wanted to frame Jack into having an affair. Knowing that Joy was trying to frame him, Jack got an idea. He asked Hayter to come and invited all of his friends to a party in his apartment. When Joy came home, she was confused to see so many people at home. Joy then argued with Jack in the bathroom. Jack tried to provoke her by saying that he knew Joy still loved Mason so much and that she better reconcile with him and gave up the three million dollars. Annoyed, Joy immediately denied his words and said that she would never get back with Mayan no matter what. The competition between Jack and Joy still continued. One day, Jack asked his friend for help to call Joy and pretended to be the consultant's assistant, she then called Joy and told her that the counseling schedule for that afternoon was delayed until Friday. Hearing the news, Joy was happy and decided to relax that afternoon, but suddenly, she heard Jack's voice leaving the house secretly. Joy, who was suspicious, immediately called the consultant to confirm the actual schedule. Turned out, it was never delayed. She then realized that it was Jack trying to trick her. They then raced to the consultant officer. The two of them finally arrived at the counseling center on time. Some day later, in the evening, Jack was surprised to see his parents coming and having dinner while chatting with Joy in his apartment. It turned out that it was Joy who invited them. Joy seemed to get along quickly with Jack's parents. Jack then took her outside to talk for a while. Outside, Joy told Jack about her motives for inviting Jack's parents. She wanted to win his parents' hearts, and by becoming a good daughter-in-law in front of Jack's parents, then during the trial, they will be on her side rather than their own child. Jack, who was cornered begged Joy not to do that. He was willing to do anything as long as his parents were not involved. Out of pity, Joy finally relented. They then returned to continue the dinner. Joy familiarized herself with Jack's parents. She even managed to convince her father-in-law to hire Jack again. The next day, when Joy was working, Jack unpacked her belongings. He wanted to find Joy's weakness and then took revenge for what she had done last night. In the bathroom, while searching for something he could do against her, he found a ring from Joy's ex-fiancé. That night, Jack went to meet Mason to return the ring that he gave to Joy. 
Jack told him that Joy hadn't moved on from him yet and that she still loved him very much. Jack also told him that if he wanted to go back with Joy, he could come to the park tomorrow to meet her. The next day, Jack held a family gathering at the city park. Joy also invited Tipper to the agenda. From a distance, Joy was stunned while watching Jack having fun playing with his niece. At that moment, the annoying Jack that Joy saw every day suddenly vanished in exchange for a man who was kind and loved children. Jack then invited his niece and Joy to go for a walk together. When Jack went to the toilet, Joy was shocked to find Mason there. Without further ado, Mason confidently asked Joy to reconcile with him, but unexpectedly, Joy rejected him. She said that now, she had found a new person that is much better. From a distance, Jack who overheard what Joy just said to Mason somehow felt relieved. Days later, at home, Jack told Hayter that he was invited to a party held by the company where Joy worked. Hayter said that this was a good opportunity for Jack to trick Joy, but instead of being happy, Jack actually looked doubtful. Since the incident at the park between Joy and Mason, Jack was afraid that one day he would really lose Joy. Without realizing that, Jack started to get interested in the annoying woman, Joy. Hayter reminded Jack that from the start, their goal was the jackpot money of $3 million, so Jack had to stay focused so he could get the money. Finally, Jack chose to do the plan. The next afternoon, at the party, according to plan, Jack managed to make friends with everyone there including Joy's boss. That night, in the middle of the party, Joy decided to change her outfit and used a stunning dress. Seeing the beauty of Joy, Jack's plan to trick Joy suddenly disappeared. At the end of the party, everyone gathered to listen to the announcement from the boss about who was king of the party. Jack was chosen and given a trophy, but before he left the stage, he was required to give a speech. He then thanked everyone for choosing him as the party king. Shockingly, at that very moment, he showed how much he loved Joy by speaking his feeling in front of everyone and reminiscing the beautiful memories they had been through together. Deep down, Jack could not lie that now he had fallen in love with Joy. Hearing those sweet words, Joy's heart was touched. After the party finished, they both went home together. On their way home, Joy told Jack that she had an unforgettable memory. Long ago, before she got a job, she visited a lighthouse near a beach. She felt so free as she looked toward the vast ocean in front of her eyes while feeling the wind blowing on her skin. The calming sound of the waves really made her peaceful, but since she was busy working now, she never had time to go to that place again. Weeks passed and six months finally passed since they were together. Joy and Jack's trial day finally come without them realizing it. In the morning, when they were about to go to the court, Joy met Mason in front of the apartment. Mason still tried to get back with Joy. He then gave her the engagement ring that he gave her back when they were still together. Seeing the ring, Joy was speechless. She knew for sure that it was Jack who gave the ring to Mason so that they could get back together. Joy was really disappointed. After all the sweet things Jack said to her and all the good things they went through together, she realized that money was everything Jack was after. Even though he felt that he was starting to be able to open his heart, it turned out that everything was nothing more than a cruel lie. Shortly after the trial began, the judge asked if they still wanted to continue to live together after passing the six months probation or continue the divorce trial. Before Jack could even answer, Joy immediately answered through her lawyer. The lawyer said that Joy still wanted to divorce. She said that Jack shouldn't need to worry about the money because she had given up on it and that Jack could claim it all. Hearing the decision just now, Jack was confused. After saying that, Joy immediately gave the ring for Mason earlier and then said goodbye to Jack. That night, even though Jack won a lot of money, he was unhappy. After parting with Joy, Jack realized how valuable she was to him. He then saw a photo left behind. It was a photo of a lighthouse that Joy mentioned before. The next day, at the office, Joy's boss announced that Joy had been promoted, but instead of happily accepting the offer, she instead gave the offer to her coworker while saying that she wanted to resign. Joy said that all this time, she was always busy and constrained at work to the point of sacrificing her own happiness. She even forgot when was the last time she was happy. Because Joy had made up her decision, even her boss couldn't hold her back. On the other hand, Jack confessed to his parents that his marriage with Joy was nothing more than a fake marriage. His father advised that even though Jack's marriage was fake, but the feeling of love in his heart was genuine, and by seeing his son's turmoil, he was sure that Jack really fell in love with Joy. His father told him to chase after the love of his life if he really loved her. Hearing those words from his father, Jack immediately left to find Joy, but sadly, even after looking everywhere, no one knew where Joy was, including Tipper. Suddenly, Jack remembered the special place that Joy had previously mentioned, 
namely the lighthouse. Jack immediately borrowed Hayter's car and went to the lighthouse. They finally met again. At the beach amidst the wind and the sound of the waves that felt peaceful, Jack dared to express his heart. He realized that he had been so annoying to her since they married and asked for a second chance to fix everything between them. He promised Joy that he would be a more reliable husband. Jack then knelt down and proposed. Joy was touched by Jack's words and then replied that she was willing to get back with him again, 